In this tutorial, we'll discuss how to create an atomic structure of the classical model, that consists of a nucleus and a bunch of electrons running around. We will do it using Blender, and first we'll delete this default cube. Now from the Add menu, let's add an icosphere, and go to this operator box. Then change the subdivision level, maybe to 4, and we can make it a bit smoother, by enabling the Auto Smooth option, from here. This will be the model for our proton and neutron, let's move it this way, by changing the X and Y values, to minus 1. Next we'll press Shift D to duplicate this sphere, and place the copy just beside the first one. Now select these two together, and again make a copy of this pair, and place them together as a collection. So this will be our nucleus, but instead of placing these elements manually, it will be better if we use rigid body physics to place them in a compact way, especially if we have a large number of elements. So we have arranged several such elements or spheres in a vertical column like this, and we have placed a large sphere at the bottom with a small opening. And we have also added a long cylinder as a guiding object to stop these elements from deflections. We have enabled rigid body physics for all these objects, so once we bake the physics and run it, we will see that the spheres are filling this large container in a compact structure. If you are not familiar with rigid body physics, you can refer to our tutorials, where we have discussed this in details, the links are given below in the video description. So once you are satisfied with the structure, you can hide all other objects in the scene, like the cylinder and the large container. So finally, our structure is here, it will form the nucleus of our atom, made of protons and neutrons. In the next step, select any one sphere and use box select to select all of them together. Now go to the object menu, then under rigid body, select apply transformation. Now again go to the object menu, and remove the rigid body physics for all of them. So this structure will become a permanent structure, and we can use it as a collection in any project. Now we'll assign some suitable materials for these elements, so let's first go to the rendered view mode. We'll assign a red material to some of these elements, or particles, those can be our protons, and we'll make some of them as green, or neutrons. And likewise, we have to complete it for all the elements, to get a structure like this. Now we want this colorful nucleus to rotate slowly around its center point. So let's go to the add menu, and add an empty, we can go for anyone, maybe a sphere. But we have to enlarge it, so that we can see it clearly. Now, we need to set this empty as a parent, for all these elementary particles, so while the empty is selected, use box select to select all these objects. We have to ensure that the empty is highlighted as the active selection. Now press Ctrl P to bring this menu, and select Object Keep Transform. If we now rotate this empty in any direction, the atom nucleus will also rotate in the same manner. So while the empty is selected, we will insert a keyframe for all the rotation values of this empty, for frame number 1. Then let's go to the end of the scene, and enter an arbitrary value for the rotations, say 300, and we need to keyframe these values, just like before. We can hide the empty, to keep the viewport clean for us. Now if we run this, we will see that the nucleus slowly starts rotating, so the first part of our task is complete. And at this point, we can get rid of all the extra objects that we added for the rigid body physics. So let's delete the cylinder, as well as the sphere, or the rigid body container. Now we will add an electron, that will move around this nucleus in a circular path. So let's hide the nucleus for the time being, and add a bezier circle, from the add menu. We need to also enlarge it sufficiently, and to do it correctly, we can unhide the nucleus once, in order to compare its size to this new circle. Then let's hide it again, as we need to add the electron on this new circle. We'll add another icosphere, and convert it to electron. Let's first change the subdivision level to 4, to get a smooth surface. We want it to continuously rotate along this circular path, so go to the Constraints tab, and add a constraint called Follow Path Constraint. Then in the target object, we have to select the Bezier circle which is this one. It will place the electron on this curved path, and we have to enable the Follow Curve option, and then click on Animate Path. It will make the electron rotate and move along the circle. If you want to reverse the direction of its rotation, you have to first select this circle. Then switch over to the edit mode, and while all the control points are selected, go to the segments menu, and select switch direction. If we now go back to the viewport, and start the animation from the beginning, we'll see that the electron now rotates in the opposite direction. But we want the electron to rotate on this curve continuously, so we need to open the graph editor from here. 
Then go to the modifiers tab and delete this generator function. We need to first add a cycles modifier to create a repetition for the generator function. Now we'll add back the generator function again and it should have the same values like before to have the same effect. The net result of this is the electron or any object that we bind to this curve will rotate continuously until the end of the scene. Now, we'll work on the modifiers for our electron because we want to give some kind of deformation to this in the direction of its motion as we saw in the demo. We have to add three such modifiers to the electron. The first one is a simple deform modifier with the taper option. Since the taper goes parallel to the y-axis at this point, we need to select the y-axis here. And if we change this value, we'll get a taper along its motion, let's go with a value like 0.5. Now we want to stretch it along its direction of motion. So we need another simple deform modifier, but this time, we'll select the stretch option, and we'll again select the y-axis. Then we can stretch it like this, let's go with 0.8. And finally, we need to use another simple deform modifier, and this time we'll select the bend option, but for this to work, we need to first add an empty. So let's add any one from this list but we need to also move it to the same location as that of the electron. Please remember that they should have the same origin point, and we also need to rotate the empty by 90 degrees. Now select the electron, and in its bend modifier, for the target, we have to select this empty. And again we'll pick up the y-axis for the bend, and we can bend it like this, along the curved path. But it looks more like a peanut, so we'll make a small change in the stretch modifier, so that the electron gets most of its mass in the front section, with a smaller tail like a comet. So expand this restriction section in the stretch modifier, and as we change this value, we will slowly get the desired shape, maybe we can go for 0.5. Then back to our bend modifier, we have to adjust this bend angle, based on the profile of the circular path, maybe we can go for 45 for this example. We need to then parent the empty, so first select the empty, and then select the electron. Now press Ctrl P to bring this menu, and then select Object Keep Transform. So the empty is now correctly parented to the electron, we can hide it in the outliner, although an empty is never actually rendered, that is why they are called empty. Anyway, if we run the animation, we'll see that we are one step closer to the final result, but if we unhide the nucleus, we will discover that it looks too big compared to the electron. So we need to enlarge this electron, while in motion, maybe we can double its size in the object properties. Now the size looks perfect, and like before, we can also make it smooth by enabling this auto smooth option from here. In the next step, we want to animate this shape change, the electron should deform like this as its velocity increases. And to do that, we have to keyframe the modifier values suitably. So for frame number 50, we'll insert a keyframe for these values in each of the three simple deform modifiers. And we need to also keyframe the size factors for this frame. Then let's go to the first frame, we will change these size factors to 1, and we need a keyframe here. Then we'll go back to the modifiers and remove the modifier values with a keyframe. This will basically remove the modifier's effect when the electron is just starting off, it will deform gradually as it picks up some speed. It looks more realistic and more appropriate for an animation, so we are done with our second task. Now we'll learn how to duplicate it and place it on the other end of this circle. So let's go to the first frame. We need to unhide the empty, which has gone under the electron, we need to select it and then press the shift key and select the electron as well. Now press shift D to duplicate this set and move it to the other end of the circular path. If we then play the animation, we'll see that both the electrons are rotating correctly, but the deformation for one of them is completely wrong, so we need to rotate this electron by 180 degrees around the z-axis. And we also see that some garbage value has come into its Y position, let's remove it. And we can finally hide the empties for a clean viewport, although empties are never actually rendered, they look clumsy in the screen. So our electrons are now looking great, but the orbit need not be horizontal always, we can tilt this orbit by changing the X rotation or the Y rotation angle as suitable. The beauty of this method is, the electrons will still follow the circular path like before, without any deviations. We can also change the speed of the electrons in this section, we have to change this number, it is the number of frames taken by an electron to complete one rotation, so we can change it to say 50, to double the speed. The electrons will now run faster, and the actual rendered output will be even faster than this viewport.
At the last step, we'll assign a material for the electrons, so let's go to the Materials tab and create a new material. We can customize it with a color as we wish, then we'll assign the same color for the other electron from this list. So we are done with everything for this atomic model, now we can render the scene to get our final output. If you are a member of this channel, you can also download this blend file. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.